This is Jason Belzer for Athletic Director U. I'm here in beautiful Buffalo, New York, uh, joined today by Director of Athletics, Mark Nutt, men's basketball coach, Nate Oates, and head football coach, Lance Leopold. Lance, let's start with you. Uh, you have been here for the last four years, approximately, um, and you and Nate share the fact that you have had several athletic directors. Uh, over the last couple of years, uh, and yet you guys have been able to build an extremely successful program at the mid-major level. And as we see in college athletics, when there's a lot of turnover on the administrative level, coaches leaving, administrators leaving, usually you don't see that type of sustained success. What do you think, in your opinion, as somebody that had a tremendous success at the Division three level, makes Buffalo such a unique place and has allowed you guys to build a culture of excellence? Well, I think even from the start, um, upon our arrival, the, the potential of this athletic department within our university was something that uh, we had the room to grow. And I think all of our leaders and athletic directors have given us the latitude within our program to, to establish the culture and, and really build our foundation the way we would like it. Um, the exciting part of having different leaders is that they all bring something new. They all bring new energy and new thoughts that are able to keep us moving in the right direction. Sure. Nate, how about yourself? Yeah, when I, when I came with uh, Coach Hurley, you know, Danny White that hired Bobby, and their selling point to Bobby was this as the most potential in the country. And, and I think it's true. They, they went through the whole PowerPoint with us, and they showed we were the only AAU flagship school for for that wasn't in a power five conference so you know i think the potential was there danny saw it had a great vision alan was really good followed it up now you know and kathy did a great job in the interim and now mark's you know each one of them have been building you know success i think we're each are building on the last one and we've been able to kind of go along for the ride i guess sure mark the new kid on the block so to speak <laughs> you get here the programs are in good hands and now it's your job essentially to kind of sustain success and take it to the next level if there is that next level. How do you, as a new AD with big expectations, obviously, handle that pressure, first of all? And how do you come in and kind of analyze the environment and say, this is where we are and this is how we are going to be able to get to the next level? Sure, I think we heard it from uh, both Lance and Nate, the word potential. And obviously, pursuing the job and, and going through the, the interview process and, and talking to so many of my peers out there about Buffalo, that's that's the word that you that you heard. And, you know, when you come in as a new athletic director, you know, you have to get the lay of the land, so to speak, and, and you're doing a lot of listening, a lot of learning. But, uh, you know, for me to be able to have uh, you know, gentlemen like Lance and Nate and, and other staff members who are UC from a firsthand basis, how they're mm -hmm. continuing to elevate the program, you know, I come in and you want to establish, you know, obviously that sustained success. I mean, that's that's part of it. But also another another part of that is to be able to give, you know, our coaches the, the latitude, as I, as I like to call it, the autonomy, so to speak, to to be able to continue to build their programs from, from within. And, and my role is to be able to share the ideas, to be able to have those type of discussions and, and see what you know what the next step you know might be and and be able to continue to surround them with the people and also the resources to be able to make it happen so as as a new you know kid on the block you know so to speak yeah is it a i wouldn't say it's a challenge it's almost you know you expect that as as a role of, of athletic director and to be able to see you know what are the things whether they're at the fifty thousand foot level or you know they're at the the ground level in terms of for them to continue to have success with their programs sure so in a way, you can say that it's a well-oiled machine right now. Things are working. And as an AD, you want to kind of put your own stamp on the program. You want to make sure that things are being done in a way that you feel is the right way. Is there messing with something in the terms of going in and saying, well, maybe I shouldn't get too involved. I shouldn't do too much because what's working is what's working. Or how do you kind of subtly go in and start doing things to make sure that five years from now, 10 years from now, maybe Nate and Lance won't be here anymore if they've moved on to greener pastures. How do you make sure that there's this sustainability for the program? Well, it's a collaborative effort. You know, it's, it's not necessarily coming in, messing with things or taking with things. Again, it's, it's, that, it's that listening and learning and being able to inject ideas that could benefit, you know, 
both programs or either or whatever the case might be and be able to understand you know at, at the end of the day it's 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 about the the university and and what you know this university has tasked you know this role with and what we've tasked you know our, our coaches with is continue to elevate you know our program's profile you know at the national level be able to continue to make it from a branding standpoint more of a of a known commodity and those opportunities and those ideas that we have in front of ourselves in terms of working collaboratively together is something that you know whether it's with Lance Nate or Felicia or, or, or Sean Burke just you know a couple of other coaches in here you know it, it's, it's a group effort to, for us to be able to determine you know what's what's the best approach and, and in my role it's it's incumbent upon me to be able to deliver that message you know, to our president, to our community, in terms of how valuable their roles are for us to sustain the success. Sure. Nate, with the turnover and leadership here, have you changed anything in the way that you run your program, or has it kind of been the heads down mentality, keep doing what we're doing, and focus on what's worked? No, I mean, all three of the ADs that I've had at four, including Kathy, have been really good in allowing us to coach. I mean, Danny's the only one that knows or thinks he knows basketball I mean he does he he, <laughs> he coached at Ohio and he played basketball you know Alan's a baseball guy Kathy was tennis and Omar's Mark's a football guy so I, I've kind of had the luxury of you know them not pretending to know basketball and sure. allowing me to do the basketball side but they, they've each had their own personality in it I mean I run everything through them scheduling I think our attendance has been great you know Mark's got some really good ideas with reaching out in the community and all that so we've kind of go back and forth on some of those ideas. Our attendance at football I thought was great. I think we had, for the Army game, I thought it was unbelievable. It's the best I'd seen since I've been here. So obviously winning helps bring people in, but you also have to do other things with it. So, you know, and Tr President Tripathi, I think, from the top, done a really good job with bringing in the right ADs to enable us to do what we've been able to do here. Sure. Sure. Lance? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, in Mark's situation, it's different than, you know, you know, when we were hired by someone that was here already, that person was was kind of had some things in motion. Alan Green was promoted from within. So, um, upon Mark's arrival in the spring, he's new to new to campus. And and the thing that excited me was um, his past experiences. His past experiences in, in a Power Five conference at the Group of Five level as a, as a as a deputy, and then also running an FCS football pro, as an athletic director so those things are there uh you know I, I thought it was you know important for mark uh, as he has said to, to kind of really observe how things have gone because he hasn't been here i think that's that's the difference now as he kind of gets a chance to get the lay of the land so to speak then it's time to to put his stamp and interject where he can he can make it better and i think that's what he's been doing sure so both of you are from wisconsin at one point coached at Whitewater. You coached for a few years. Obviously, you were there for a long time. Uh, Buffalo isn't an easy place to recruit to, uh, and yet you've been able to attract student athletes from all over the country. Can you talk a little bit about how you've gone about building your program and whether or not you guys talk to each other, discuss some of the strategies, and, and maybe follow a similar blueprint? Yeah, I think we're trying to get a Mullins Dairy out here in Buffalo <laughs> that, that, no, from Watertown. Uh, um, but no, you can go ahead. Um, you know, the thing about it is we grew up very close. Uh, our hometowns are very close. So what we talk about, I, I think it's something about the in, in our, our families or in education and things like that. So I think the value system and, and personalities are, are somewhat similar. Even though we're in different sports, we, we have the same reference points on different things, as Nate alluded to. Uh, I think what we've been able to do is be ourselves. And, and as you kind of see, we like to have some fun with it along. But I think the part of... Yeah, if, you know, people want to take their shots at, at Buffalo for, for weather or snow or something. But when people really get here, they're pleasantly surprised. But more important, I think at any level, at any time, it's about people. Yes, you want to make your the best facilities and that's do it. But it's still the daily interactions you have with people. And when people have a chance to interact, I think, with our football staff or our basketball staff, they see the genuineness that, that we, we have. And, and we want to try to get the best on and off the, the fields and court for our student athletes. Sure. Yeah, I mean, one of our first questions we ask a kid is, you know, if you're worried about the temperature outside in November, December, January, February, the temperature in our gym right here is the same as the temperature in the gym in Miami. So if you're wanting to be outside all the time, like let us know up front if you're one of those kids that's not really a gym rat, and we'll uh, we'll move on and find somebody that is a gym rat. So 
we kind of eliminate the weather thing right out of the gate. We're, we're during our season, we're in the gym all the time. We're either watching video or in the gym or in the classroom. So th those places are all really warm. In the summer, I'd much rather be in Buffalo than I would be in uh, in the south. I shoot. We went to Disney in uh, August. I told my wife I'm never doing that again. That was a miserable <laughs> week in uh, Disney in August. So, like, for my season, it's perfect. I, like, summers are off season for us, and it's I think it's perfect weather here in Buffalo. So, and it's like we've got the indoor facility for football. You got to bring a little toughness. I mean, the Packers are one of the best. Sure. You know, he might argue with the Chiefs or something, but. The Packers, shoot, those those guys are out there with their shirts off in the stands. So we, we get a little Buffalo toughness, a little blue collar up here in Buffalo. Sure. Mark, um, you've had about eight or nine months now to observe these two. Um, what do you think makes them special? And what would you take when the time comes, if that time comes, that they go on to go somewhere else uh, to find the coach that has similar qualities? Well, you know, for eight or nine months, nine months I've been here, you know, obviously it's about relationship and, and building the trust, you know, with these two and, and the rest of the coaching staff that, that we have and, and being able to have a genuine relationship, you know, first and foremost. So that's, that, that's key because as mentioned earlier, you know, it's, it's, it's about the people that, that are in place, you know, the people that, you know, from a recruiting standpoint, uh, that when parents, you know, they bring their kids here and they might have questions about Buffalo, you know, first of all, they'll be very surprised once they get here. You know, we want to get kids on campus. We want to get kids in this community to to be able to explore and understand what Buffalo is all about. But, but also too, understanding the the quality of people that you're going to get, the people who are going to touch. You know, your your son or daughter. You know, on a daily basis. That's that's very important to me. And being able to work with with these two and others, and be able to to continue to to find that right mix of, of people from a support area and also from an administrative standpoint to be able to help their programs grow. That's that's important. And and again, you know, from the last nine months that I've had the opportunity to work with them, it's, it's having that open door relationship and being able to, you know, obviously understand each other, understand what the, the needs are, understand what the what the challenges are, but more importantly, making the making the job better a, as we go. You know, um, the, the job has gotten better, you know, from a from a coaching standpoint, from AD standpoint, from, you know, when they, from five years ago to now. And it's it's up to me and all, all of us to be able to work with leadership, we'll work with the campus to continue to, to grow this program. So, you know, if that if that time comes, long time down the road where, you know, you're looking at, you know, being able to replace any coach on, on staff, you know what, you look at the qualities in terms of, you know, how well we able to work together, you know, how open and honest that we are, the trust that we have, but these two gentlemen that I have with them is on a high, high level. And you, know, you look for qualities like that, which is very important for any organization. How do you, again, similar question, how do you make sure that you're doing everything that you can to ensure that they're happy and that they can not only sustain success, but want to stay at Buffalo and continue to build the program and and push it into the future it's about having a relationship it's about having an open and honest relationship as i talked before i mean you know nate, nate and i will will text probably every day as, as they'll tell you and a lot of it's not about work it's, it might be little it might be jokes here or there or whatever the case might be um you know lance and i you know we'll we'll, we'll <laughs> chat quite often and we'll communicate you know back and forth um you know this structure was set up which i which I like from Danny and Allen is, you know, both of them have sport administrators, so to speak. Uh, you know, both of them are deputy athletic directors here, Eric Gross and Nate Wills, that kind of handle that day-to-day. -day. And, you know, I, I, I make sure that that contact and, and communication is at a very high, high level as well because, you know, also preparing those two gentlemen for whatever next step might be for them in terms of, you know, their career advancement and, and being able to work with a head basketball coach and head football coach is very important. So as long as that – as long as we maintain that high level of communication and, and there's no surprises, you know, either way, from me to them or from them to me, you know, that's that's a positive and that and that helps maintain and be able to grow what we're doing here. Sure. Lance, final question. How do you sustain excellence? How do you ensure that the program remains as successful it has as it's become and that it's in good hands whether or not you're gonna continue to be the head of that program or somebody ten or twenty years from now? I, I think probably the, the way that we've done it in the past and what we want to do is, you know, you, you've got to keep striving to get better, you know, whether it be within the program or what surrounds your program and touches your program. And, uh, you know, complacency is a thing or being satisfied. And that's probably one thing I, I, I you know, good or bad or indifferent is, you know, you keep pushing to get to, to stay, 
to either to catch your peers in areas or surpass them in other things. And the same thing you ask your players. You, you know, once you hit a certain point, you, you still keep coaching them. There's always something you can work on. And you can't spend a lot of time looking in the rearview mirror and patting yourself on the back of something that may be accomplished, and you can't look too far down the road. So as, as you do that, and as a head coach, I've, I, I, I trust and uh, let our coordinators and, and staff to, to do some of the, the stuff maybe in the X and O scheme type of world and, and oversee some of those things. But more importantly, I'm, I'm continually working on what we have to do, like I said, to, to, you know, to, to catch people that we're competing against in certain areas and, or surpassing them in others. I mean, I think culture is the biggest thing. Um, obviously, we both had good years, or I'm having a good year. Lance had a great year, but I, it's really the players that are winning the game. So you, like, you got your recruiting's got to be at a high level to keep it maintained over. And I think when you bring recruits in, you develop. It's all about relationships, like we've all said. But when you bring them in, there's got to be a culture already established within your program to where your guys are really selling and then it just they continue to pass on so we got five seniors this year so that they we've had to pass the culture on to the next group to the next group the recruits that come in so i think culture building i matter of fact there was focus 3.com guy brian kite lance brought him in and invited us to come sit on his meetings with him a couple summers ago he he was all about building a culture playbook we, we after that day our staff sat down. We've got a middle skills guy, Arnie, that we sat down and built the whole culture playbook. Now we've just been preaching it for two years. I think that was a huge turning point in our program. So big shout out to Lance for bringing, bringing mm -hmm. Brian in. But I think it has helped. And then you just build that culture, and then you keep recruiting really talented players and sure. kind of indoctrinate so, them into your culture. And I think you can maintain it doing that. A culture of continuous improvement is seemingly. Yeah, we've got three core beliefs, and one of them is continuous growth. So that, that kind of came out of that. So we're going to continuously get better. Lance is always talking about 1% better every day. So I, I love that. We're talking about continuous growth. Let's make sure we're better the next game than we were this game and just keep it building every day. And, Mark, su sustained excellence. What do you think Buffalo needs to do to sustain excellence? What do you think organizations that are successful over long runs in college athletics do to be able to It's It's, it's about level? commitment. You know, it, it, that's what it, that's what it's all about. You know, looking at, you know, the success that we've had this year, you know, with football, with with men's basketball, you know, that, that brings about some excitement, that brings about pride, you know, in the area. But you know, the one thing which is all of our job and my job in particular is that, you know, it, it's great where we are right now, but you know, we can't be satisfied as as what was heard, you know, earlier. You know, we have to always be you know on the lookout or always pursue you know what what is the next thing that's going to help you know our program which if it helps our program helps grow our program helps grow our brand you know what great benefits it is for the university what a huge benefit it is for for western new york and the, and the city of buffalo so so for us to be able to you know get people to to understand that and to be able to see, which mentioned earlier about the huge crowd, you know, at the at the Army game, or uh, you know, the sellout that we're going to have at, at our, our next home basketball game. Well, to be able to sustain that, you know, there has to be uh, more of an understanding, and it, you know, comes through me as the leader of this organization in terms of, you know, what here's where we are now, but here's what it takes to be able to go to the next level. Here's what it takes to be able to to put that blueprint together for, you know, what facilities might look like here in the next five years. Put that blueprint together in terms of what our staffs, you know, might look look like, you know, within the next, you know, five years. And to be able to continue to grow it because, you know, once you get to that that level of competing at the highest level within our conference, I mean, we get that national exposure, which, again, helps our coaches from a recruiting standpoint, helps them from, a, from a, them being able to, to grow and continue to, you know, attract, you know, people to their program, which is an exciting time. So, you know, again, Kudos to working with you know, some people that, you know, Danny and, and Alan and others that, you know, were able to bring them on in, on in a time where, you know, Buffalo was not necessarily on the map as it is now. And, and, you know, obviously the word foundation and potential has been used is continue to grow upon that foundation and be able to realize the potential that we have here as, you know, uh, the only AAU uh, FBS, you know, program in the, in the state of New York. Sure. Thank you for the insight, Mark. Nate and Lance, we appreciate it, and uh, for sharing a little bit of the secret sauce of Buffalo. Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.